So before you watch this video, I just have to forewarn you, this is not a beginner's video starting from zero. This is for once you've actually started to gain some momentum with your different side projects, side hustles, or even your full-time career. In this video, a lot of the opportunities that I'm going to be discussing really happened because I've already had a few years of experience working in the animation industry. I've developed a pretty solid presence on social media and in general, I've already had some time just dabbling and experimenting with these things a few years ago. So in this video, I'm just going to be talking about my art side hustles, not really my full-time art job. But if you would like to learn more about my financial journey as an artist, I've made all of these other videos such as how I make money as an artist, 10 ways I make money as an artist, art side hustle ideas, and how I make money as a full-time artist in 2022. So the four main ways I make money through my side hustles, personal projects, freelance gigs, whatever you wanna call it, they primarily come from four ways, which is my book slash graphic novel, social media, products and merch, and freelance projects. And from these four main ways, there's gonna be like little branches of subsets that come out of them, but I'll dig further into those things as I get deeper into this video. I did also want you all to know that these numbers are all pre-tax because I think it's important to know when people present you these numbers, it's usually gonna be pre-tax because everyone's gonna at the end of the day be paying different numbers of taxes. And these are also pre-fees like pre-agent fees and pre-Etsy fees, things Things like that. But in general, I just think it's good to know the overall amount that you make so that you know like you're able to cover certain fees or whatever it is that you need to pay for to make your business happen. But first, let's just start off with my book. So for those of you who don't know, I just recently released my first middle grade graphic novel, Mish the Bad Demon. So if you would like to read it, you can check it out in the links below. But basically when I first sign a contract for a book, you get an advance payment and you will eventually be paid out in different milestones which are pretty much like the completion of major steps of your book so if you finish the rough sketches there you go you get a bunch of money then you finish the final art you get a bunch of money your book gets published you get a bunch of money so you just tend to get a lump sum of payments for every time you complete one major step of your book and that's how i've been getting paid out for my graphic novel while i've been working my full-time animation job and again i do have a book agent as well so a percentage of that does go to them so in 2022 I made around $38,750 for completing two milestones of my graphic novel. And in general, I would say that my book is my major side hustle. I would pretty much consider my book a second job. I just don't really consider it my full-time job just because I don't really work on it full-time. I wouldn't say that right now I would feel comfortable living off of my graphic novel only. Like maybe in the future, I would love to get to a point where I can just live off of making comic books and just work from home and just be in control of my schedule or something like that. But for now, I think this is a decent place to start for, you know, my first book. Then next is social media. So first I'm going to start off with YouTube and Last year on AdSense only, I made around $5,276.27, which honestly is not the greatest because I will say last year on YouTube, I kind of had a rough like almost first half of the year. So my videos were very lukewarm and I didn't really decide to make more serious videos until, you know, the second half of the year. So in a way, I know that to some people, an additional $5,000 per year sounds lovely. I just think for me, considering the amount of work that I now put into my YouTube channel and what I would be making now with the types of videos in present day versus the ones I made earlier last year of just the speed paint videos, I think that I would be making more money with the types of videos I do now instead of just the speed paint ones. So I am anticipating that I will be making more than this in AdSense this year. And then as for sponsorships, 
since last year was kind of a eh year in sponsorships, I made around $3,400. And again, I'm still grateful for even receiving sponsorships at the end of the day because they are what helps this channel be possible because AdSense alone doesn't really support me making videos as much on a monthly basis, but the sponsorships are really a better form of motivation and financial support for me to be able to keep making videos on the side. And speaking of sponsors, I'd love to thank the sponsor of today's video, Love Bonito. Love Bonito is a fashion company originally from Singapore that is on a mission to empower women around the world as well as further amplifying Asian representation in fashion and media. And this month, as many of you may know, is Asian American Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Month and it's also soon gonna be Mother's Day. So I got this relaxed jersey tee and these linen shorts and what I love is that Love Bonito has this very timeless, modern, but also relaxed style to them. So while their clothing is perfect for work and parties, they also, for example, like this linen shirt, it's perfect for vacations and relaxation and just chilling. Then I got this high neck knit tank and these denim shorts because for me, I love my black clothing and this is just my way of satisfying my comfort zone. Then next is this classy modern white dress in which I actually got so many compliments from wearing because I feel like white can create just as bold of a statement as black. And then I styled this dress with this relaxed satin shirt, which honestly was probably my favorite purchase because I feel like I've been looking for something just to go with any dresses, like this black one as well, which is also really classy, super elegant, and the silky smooth texture of the satin shirt just really makes any outfit feel more sophisticated. And lastly, Love Bonito is a female founded and a female led company. So they have partnered with organizations like Room to Read to advocate girls education around the world. But yeah, gotta love, Love Bonito. You can also upgrade your closet with clothes made to fit you today with Love Bonito. So go to the link in my description and use promo code LBX tripled for 10% off your order of $110 or more. Anyway, thank you to Love Bonito for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to side hustles. So next under the social media category is Instagram. So through Instagram itself, I literally do not make money from just posting my comics, which is why I eventually turned them into little self-published books, which I will discuss later. But the only amount that I've made purely from just posting on Instagram is through reels in which I really only did probably less than 20 of them last year. So through reels in which Instagram initiated this incentive to pay creators to make reels. I don't know if they do that anymore because I haven't really made reels for a while now, but they paid me $560.17 and you know, this is like nothing compared to my book. But if you think about it, $500 can be your funding for like meals, groceries, bills, or something like that. Like this can go into something regardless and the reels that I made didn't really take that much time to do. So I would say that, you know, for the amount of effort that I put into Reels last year, this isn't terrible. And then as for sponsorships on Instagram, I made around $6,000, which was actually more than how much I made on YouTube. Usually I make more on sponsorships through YouTube, but because I feel like last year was not the greatest year for me, I had more of a focus on Instagram than YouTube. But as you can see this year, I'm trying to focus more back onto my YouTube and Instagram is kind of more on the chill side for me. And then last year on Patreon, Patreon, I made $1,064.12. So this is just from me having a $1 tier only on Patreon. So I actually recently just changed this last week. So for those of you who don't know, I recently relaunched my Patreon with more tiers, more benefits. I am taking Patreon more seriously and even offering email consultations for anybody who wants me to provide personalized feedback for them monthly. 
so definitely check it out. There's only like less than five spots left. So if you want to get any feedback on anything for me to review your work, please check out my Patreon. But otherwise, last year, I only had a $1 tier and I will be honest and just say I don't think I was doing my best with Patreon in the past like two years because I've just been doing the bare minimum of sharing early access behind the scenes and just doing a $1 tier because I knew I could not afford to post more additional exclusive content on Patreon when I wasn't in a place where I was able to. I'm still so grateful for people to even consider supporting me when I wasn't really posting that much on it. But regardless, it means a lot to support an artist like me. But I swear this year is gonna be so much better for Patreon and I am anticipating to make more than this amount on Patreon this year. So then moving on to the next category is products and merch. So last year I didn't really start printing out zines for my comics that I made on Instagram until like fall of last year. So this amount is really just based on like a three month time period and not really a yearly thing. So Lightbox Expo was kind of like the pivotal moment for me where I was like, all right, this is the time period where I really got to start printing stuff, stocking up on my products. At this time, I've only had like one self-published book out and now all of a sudden I have like four. So from Lightbox Expo last year, I made around $10,180 over the weekend, which actually is so insane to me that me just over the course of one weekend, I just made over $10,000 and I got the chance to meet all of you. But you know, if someone came up to me and asked me, hey, Michelle, would you like to just sell your stuff for one weekend and meet your supporters of the past few years for $10,000? I would be like, hell yeah. So I'm really grateful for that experience at Lightbox Expo. I actually felt like that was one of the moments that got me out of my rut because I wasn't feeling as productive due to a lot of mental health reasons last year. And then after Lightbox Expo ended, I did relaunch my Etsy shop as well since I now have more products, which were my self-published books that really aligned with what it was that I wanted to do because for the longest time I was making stuff like stickers, pins, charms, and I do love stationary like that but I do also feel like it doesn't really reflect me as an artist and what I want to make money off of my work personally like you know I could just be selling t-shirts and just slapping on my characters on it and just shove it down people's throats to buy my t-shirts but I felt like it didn't really align with what I feel proud about selling. So I was like, I love reading books. I love comic books. I love paper goods. So that's why I was like, I'm gonna self publish my comics that I made on Instagram. But anyway, let me get to the point. On my Etsy, in which I launched in November of last year, I made around $5,424.28. This was only based on like less than two months left of the year, so I thought that was pretty good for someone that just was getting their foot back into the Etsy world. So yeah, and also if you would like to support my work, you can check out my Etsy shop where you can purchase my self-published comics and prints and digital products. And then lastly, freelance. So freelance is kind of when clients actually email me and reach out to me being like, hi, Michelle, we would love to do this with you. And it's not a full-time job. I would say that these projects only lasted between three to five days of a full day's worth of work. So the first one is an illustration based commission project that I did and I was paid $5,000. And I also think it's important to note that this illustration did not make this company money. Like they only wanted me to just make it for a holiday thing, which honestly not every company does this. So I thought it was great that they specifically mentioned that to me. So I was like, okay, sure, fine. Then the next freelance project was one beat board sample. So this was not a full on storyboard sequence. A TV company basically asked me to do beat boards for this show that they're developing. And they just asked me to do like 10 beat boards. And I was paid $5,500 for this. And this project only took around three days to do with work that was like less completed because thankfully in storyboards, you can keep your work rough. So I know this is a lot and some people even wonder how do I do these things like during my off hours of having a full-time job and a lot of these projects did not happen at the same time. So it's not like when I say all of these things, they were all occurring 
at once in my everyday life, like some of the shop stuff or creating my self-published comics. That kind of came in like the second half of the year. And some of the other things like the sponsorships mostly happened in the first half of this year. So a lot of the things happen at different times. So it's important to note that a lot of these projects were occurring at different times throughout the year. And it's not like, oh, I was doing these things on an everyday basis and other of these side hustles are done a little bit more passively, such as YouTube, like yes, I do make money from making more videos, but at the same time, if I took a month off and did absolutely nothing, I would still be generating AdSense from the videos I've already posted. So that adds to the total at the end of the day. But if you are curious to learn more about how I personally balance my time with a full-time job and side hustles, check out this video, how I balance a full-time job with side hustles as an artist to see how I manage my time. But I hope this video helped give you a little bit insight about some of the things that you could be doing as well. I'm not saying that you should be doing everything that I listed in this video at all, but it definitely, I hope, provides options of things that exist out there that you might want to consider because for me, when I was an artist first starting off, I didn't really know what my options were in the side hustle world. Like all I thought were just like doing commissions or something like that. And honestly, I hate doing commissions. So I just wanted to do my best in finding other ways of making money on the side as an artist without either doing commissions or teaching, like not saying that I'll never teach, but it's just something I personally don't wanna do right now in my life. But yeah, I personally believe that artists can benefit a lot from learning a little bit more about business and finances. I'm not even a professional in that world. I will take and learn what I can to apply it to my own work and art. So I really highly suggest other young artists to consider just learning a little bit of business as well so that it's not as intense intimidating to consider doing side projects like these and you learn a lot from the process as well and I think that having more artists that are more business savvy really will help benefit artists overall so that we don't get taken advantage of as much and we can support ourselves without only relying on clients, studios, or businesses. So anyway, thank you for watching this video and thank you to Love Bonito again for sponsoring today's video and I will see you all in the next one.